Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Darren Crawley and I'll be um, presenting the uh, beginning of our webinar uh, which is uh, in conjunction with Mike Smith from Gradient Consulting. Um, if I can just explain, we've, uh, we've actually been running a series of webinars over the last two to three months and um, welcome back to those that have previously attended um, the webinars we've run both in late uh, November and also at the end of January. Uh, Mike Smith has very kindly uh, presented um, a very illuminating and useful um, out outline of how both to plan and prepare for an ERP implementation and also uh, to look at how an implementation project is correctly executed. And um, this has all been through um, years of experience that both Mike and Gradient have, have gained working with organizations looking to evolve and improve their business processes as well as the technology that underpins those. So I'd like to welcome everybody to this afternoon's uh, webinar. Um, so ju just to recap, if there are any new attendees to uh, the webinar today, um, ju just to explain, um, if we're looking at ERP, enterprise resource uh, planning, we're, we're actually looking at software that enables a business to integrate, control all of its operations through from sales, finance, HR, production, warehouse management, and a whole gamut of different functions within each individual business. And this software is actually an enabler to empower businesses to manage, organize, analyze, compete, and grow. So what we're looking at is how uh, organizations can benefit from practical and impartial advice so they can make better use of this type of technology. And this is why we're so pleased to present Mike from Gradient. Um, they have been uh, established since 1997 uh, and have provided countless businesses with the opportunity to select, implement, and work better with the technology that's available. And as for Mike, Mike has a wealth of experience. Uh, originally Mike graduated from Stirling University uh, from an economics degree and worked in the city before moving into manufacturing and distribution. And he has over a quarter of a century's experience of Thank manufacturing you. and logistics, which means that there isn't a lot that Mike doesn't know about, quite frankly. So um, without further ado, what I'd like to do is introduce Mike to uh, this afternoon's uh, presentation. Um, I will take the opportunity, once Mike's done, uh, done his wonderful stuff, to um, feedback some questions from the floor, and hopefully we can have uh, an interactive session uh, involving some useful questions from the floor that Mike can actually uh, get to the heart of and, and actually illuminate further. So without further ado, uh, over to you, Mike. Well, thank you very much, Darren. Um, <coughs> what, what can you say after an introduction like that? Uh, it, it's that sort of welcome to everybody, uh, and I'll try and follow that as best I can. And <laughs> Fulfill your expectations. Um, wealth of experience, yes, probably. Anyway, moving on. Uh, as Dan said, this is the third in, in our series of webinars. Um, and what we're really talking about here today is where do we go after we've actually completed our implementation? So it's really life beyond the implementation of your initial ERP project. Okay, so you've gone through the business of why do we want an ERP, what sort of problems have we got, our systems are no longer in alignment with what we do for a living, uh, the way we work within the company is no longer in alignment with what our clients and customer base want, and our systems are no longer in alignment with, uh, with, with how we work. Now, in the first seminar, we talked about how you might recognize that and the sort of 10 questions you might ask yourself to, to, to give you a clue as to whether you actually need to either re-implement the systems you've got to look for new ones. In the second one, Darren said, we looked at how do I prepare for an implementation? How do I plan for it? How do I project manage it? What are the sort of things that I need to do within the business? 
to try and maximize our opportunity of success of that implementation. This webinar is talking about, okay, we've done the implementation. So we're talking about issues in staying ahead of the game. We're looking at how do we keep the competitive edge, not sit on a higher wire and ledge. So what's the benchmark? Well, we're sitting there saying that your people, systems, and common goals keep in alignment you are probably looking at doing proactive work to avoid stagnation. and We can talk a little bit more about that later. And we're saying, all right, the project that you did results in a solution that you continue to evolve as your markets change, right? So your ERP keeps delivering for you in a changing world. Now, how do we go about this? Well, one way of looking at it is, is saying, all right, there it is. It's sitting on its rock. It's on its plinth. We've stuck a gold ribbon around it. Well, that's it, isn't it? Now we've got this shining result, so stick it in a box, stick a bow in it, and do something else, right? Wrong. And this is my, you'll notice at the bottom of my screens, I occasionally have a mic says comment. So I'm saying be absolutely clear on this. You know? Remember why you needed a new implementation in the first place. This is the real opportunity to support the way your business works. But the way your business works will change, which is kind of how you got to the point of needing a new system in the first place. So remember the three legs of your business. Yeah? People, internal and external, customers, suppliers. Systems and common goals, because you are part of someone else's extended supply chain one way or another. Right? So you've created just now a platform to grow your business. Now you must keep it relevant. So, what does that mean? Well, when you were going through the business of planning your implementation, you hopefully went through the business of saying, right, well, rather than just mimicking how we're working just now, we'll take the opportunity of using the capabilities of a modern ERP for flexibility to decide how we want to work in the future to be more efficient and more effective and more capable and more in alignment with what our customers are asking. And you're thinking, well, we probably need these reports and I think these KPIs will be a good idea and can you set up a dashboard that shows me all the outstanding orders for the week and all the work orders that are sitting there that need to be done over the week and a dashboard that shows me like a traffic lights, you know, green amber or red, how am I doing during the week, I'm ahead of the game, or behind the game, where are we looking problems? So you've originally decided what you want for operational levers. However, they will change once you start to operate live. It's so common, it's almost axiomatic. You're three months down the line, post your new implementation, and one way or another, you're going, hmm, you know what? We could do a bit of tweaking. Right? And then on top of that, customers will ask you to do new things. They tend not to be static, so they come along and say, you know what you've been doing with us for the past two years? Well, can you do this for us now? Or your company will see new market opportunities. Oh, we've always been doing this, but hey, there's a real opportunity over there. Why don't we go and do that? So one way or another, your systems start to become out of alignment with your ways of working, which become out of alignment with your customers and suppliers' requirements. And for those who saw the very first webinar, this is how you ended up with the answers to the 10 questions we proposed. Right. Remember, if any of you have read Sun Ji, who's also known as Sun Wu, who wrote the original Art of War, uh, he stated that any battle plan you carefully craft before you go to war goes completely out of the window on your first contact with the enemy. Now, I'm not saying that <laughs> once you go live on an ERP, your staff are the enemy and your customers are the enemy. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is all those nice thoughts that you had in the room quietly going, this is what we'll do, this is what we need, this is how it will work. When you start doing it, you suddenly go, yeah, you know what? That doesn't 
really work quite the way that I need it to work, or that's a great report, but it would be better if I had this bit of information on it, or that's a great report, but it would be better if it had if it did not have that bit of information on it, and so on. So after three months, but not before, not before, plan to review the use of the system. Give it a chance to bed in, and then have a plan in place to review the use of the system. Um, with all respect to Darren and his many, many colleagues, this should not be offered as a sales opportunity. This should be a review run by the company. You know? Expect to see some processes that you've put together with all the best will in the world will be seen in practice as awkward and not as helpful as you thought they might be now that they're in use. Some reports might require information added, information removed, newly designed, dropped. We thought that was going to be a great report, but you know what? Never look at it. Don't need it. The various supervisors and managers may want to adjust the information that they now have to help manage what they do. So in the light of experience, there's now a phase two. This is normal. Don't be worried by that. That is not saying your implementation failed. On the contrary, this is the way it goes. This is normal. The other side of it, all right, forget the internals, just people just generally working saying, I need this report or I'd like that KPI. Your customers may well start asking you for something new. Yeah? You might have started a new print. You know, if, if a customer asks you for something new, how would you classically have answered it? Somebody might just oh, start a new spreadsheet or create a little database or put in place a little phone call when such and such calls asking, can they deliver 20,000 of this? I'll give Jane a ring down there and just see what we've got in stock and see what we've actually got in the walker on the water expected in and we might need to order stuff or we might need to do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come back to that a bit later, but don't do that. You think it's an easy answer, but long term it's not. So my suggestion is you put together a little ad hoc multifunctional group you know, and make a point of creating three rational solutions to whatever the issue is. Right. OK, this sounds like a sales pitch. I don't mean it to be. But you know, if you would like help in formal techniques and methodologies for continuous improvement, then please, by all means, talk to us. There's other people to talk to as well, but talk to us. Whether you talk to us or not, discuss upstream and downstream implications of what you're doing. So you might put together a little group of two or three people, you know, somebody who's involved in that area, somebody who comes from an area that that area, you know, and somebody who is needed, whose information and input is needed from an area to solve this issue, discuss upstream and downstream implications. There are various formal techniques you can do for problem analyzing and, and, and getting answers. Get buy-in and implement, implement the change into your ERP. Um, now, if, <laughs> if your ERP workflow or business rules cannot be changed by you internally, you've bought the wrong ERP, you should be able to do a certain level of adjustment of what you're doing yourselves. And the sort of thing I'm talking about here, um, you know, it's a customer who's suddenly saying, oh, I need, you know, I need you to look after batch numbers in this way, or I need you once you've, you've collected batch numbers, or if you're collecting what you're sending to me, I need you to um, send me it in an electronic format. I mean, that's the sort of thing you can probably set up yourself. You don't want to start a little spreadsheet and collect that information in that and send the spreadsheet. Do it through your ERP. Just, just change how you do it. Shouldn't take long, but create a, in the company a formal open process for continuous improvement mechanisms. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. Another option. Your business is opening new markets. So either you're talking about buying another company, bringing it into the group in order to attack a different market segment, or 
somebody somewhere has said, you know, this market segmentation over here, there's a real opportunity that we have the capability of attacking. We really ought to be going there and doing that. Now, this might be bigger than just customers asking for a new thing like, uh, can you send me this report? Um, if, you, if you're sending me, you know, this sort of good, can you actually send me a certificate of conformance? You know, whatever it is they're asking. But if your business is opening new markets, this might be a bigger thing. So right up front, go through a proactive process to map out how you'll need to work in these markets. Create a gap analysis between how you're doing things just now and the system processes as you have them just now and the ways that you need to work to deliver to your customer or markets in that new market if it's different. The interfaces you might need to create with your customers in that market. The workflows that you need as options within your systems to support that market. And the worst case scenario is that will mean change, right? Now, this is similar to the initial scoping and spec that we talked about in the first two webinars. Not as big as that. But it's similar in, 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 in style to the initial scoping and specification, right? Unless this is a real diversification and it's, it's, it's so there isn't any. It's a completely different business. Yeah. You know, if you're doing a merger and acquisition, but it's not in a related company, it's an absolutely different business, but you want the same ERP to be able to support you within that brand new business that's doing something completely different. But you do need to scope it and look in terms of, all right, what is it we need to do? Map out how we need to work, create the gap analysis. And these are things that you really need to do. Generally, change discussions are established, yeah, to solve a problem, improve a process, implement a new idea. But recognize that change is the norm, whether it's the little change of the way we set up the ERP in the beginning, we thought that was going to be right, but we're now three months on and really we want to do these little tweaks. Or we have, you know, existing customers who are evolving what they do, coming back to us and saying, can you do something slightly different from what you used to? All the way through to, we want to go into this new market, um, or we're buying this new company, which is a much larger grade of, uh, of change. But there are very well-trodden paths to make sure that you can keep bringing your ERP and your core systems with you. So recognize that change is the norm. It's a bit trite, but sadly it's true. The world changes at an ever-changing rate, and I'm sure you've recognized that. And a very wise man once said, you know what, if you're thinking about catching that train, you've already missed it. So you want to be proactive and upfront about it, not running hard to catch up somebody else. Advice, even though it seems easy, don't go down the short-term route of individual coping mechanisms. Managing issues in this way is an illusion. It's actually the slippery slope to losing your competitive edge and becoming more cost inefficient. If you've been the route of getting to the point where every department's got its own little spreadsheet, every department's got its own little database, you've got uh, spreadsheets in sales, you've got spreadsheets in procurement, you've got spreadsheets in the warehouse, you've got spreadsheets in production scheduling, you've got spreadsheets in planning. Just think, how did we actually get to that point? Because there was a point at which you didn't have all that. So if you've just finished an implementation, you're currently at that point. So what I'm talking about is how do we go about making sure that we keep at that point and don't slowly but surely drift away from it because every time a little change is needed, the easy option is to say, 
it's all right. We'll, we'll we'll just do this. We'll just we'll just stick it in that spreadsheet. And that'll be fine. Because eventually it all catches up, and you look about you, and you go, you know what? We're spending twenty five percent of our administrative time doing nothing. Okay. From the last webinar, we saw that failure is sadly more more common than you might expect. And that if uh, we give thought to understanding the main failure points, we can move to avoid them. Right? That was to do with failure in terms of implementing an ERP. But once you've got the ERP up and running and working, this is actually still a valid thought, as failure can creep up on you by stealth, like a black swan. This is where the phrase black swan comes from. I forget who it was, but somebody wrote a book in which um, the black swan appeared as something completely unexpected that nobody planned for, nobody expected, just crawled out of the woodwork and there it is. Right. So what do we mean by failure here? Customer needs becoming out of line with how we work, how we evolve our day-to-day -day working, becoming out of line with how the system architecture is designed our systems becoming less and less relevant and therefore that ERP project that you may have spent 150,000, 250,000, 500,000, 800,000, 1.2 million, the numbers can be frightening. That ERP project that you spent whatever money you spent on no longer benefits the business in quite the way that it did but it doesn't need to be like that. Yeah. You may have had your previous system five years and you thought, you know what, we need a new system. Well, it doesn't need to be like that. Okay, so black swan, things come out of the woodwork, keep evolving or become a Darwinian throwback. ERP systems have a high black swan risk. So one of the things you think about when you're buying an ERP is, how easy is it to evolve this thing? How easy is it for me to create workflow? How easy is it for me to create business rules? How easy is it for me to change, subtly or otherwise, how I actually do things on the ground with my staff? Because if you, go, if you end up building little spreadsheets and little databases and little notebooks and little phone calls, you're increasing the administrative effort and everything that you do and therefore it becomes more and more difficult to actually get either production or distribution or whatever it is that you do do out the door. So costs increase and underlying costs increase as ad hoc stuff increases. We become uncompetitive but it doesn't need to be like that. Why? How about short term good intentions? It's going to be short term, quicker for me to bang together a spreadsheet than actually with a couple of my colleagues as to how we can actually resolve this. Too busy. Ah, up to my eyes, and it can't you see I'm firefighting? The problem is the firefighting will just increase. Lack of leadership. So instead of people at the top saying, you know, as a policy, we actually want this company to go down continuous improvement. We want this company to go down total productive maintenance. We want this company to go down lean. We want this company to proactively reduce our inventories. They just say, well, if you make it happen, that's fine by me. It's working okay. Okay, let's be positive. What can we do? Well, all projects have to go through the same basic steps. First, we need to decide what needs to be done. Then we must design the possible answers. That doesn't need to be as fancy as that sounds. It could be just three people sitting around a table talking about saying, you know what, we can actually resolve this very quickly by doing this. Then we must implement the answers. So it's one thing generating the answers, but it's great feedback to the staff if you actually implement them and then keep doing it. But most importantly, you must be in control. You must own what you're doing. You must get support from the top. And I'm a great believer that staff need to be empowered rather than frightened of making suggestions. 
And we've all seen companies where the staff are frankly frightened to make suggestions. No names, no pack drill, but I can think of one straight off the top, where because of the autocratic managerial style, the staff long since have stopped making suggestions, stopped thinking, they put their brains out of their head when they walk through the door and they just do as they're told. And then they walk out the door, put their brains back in and they can tell you everything about pigeon fencing, designing gliders, lepidoptera, you name it. Okay, let's be positive, what can we do? If you are going to, if there are sort of issues that raise because things change and suddenly eh, we need to do something a little bit different, very simple requirements gathering phase, so what's the issue? And so what? And if the answer is, well that's the issue, but the so what is, makes no difference, then don't do anything. If it's, well if we don't do that, then we've got to do this and this and this, and it will take us three hours, and that's three hours five times a week, and really we could do without it. Design phase, formal or informal multidisciplinary group, it doesn't need to be fancy. Development phase, how can this work in detail? How can we make this work? What are your thoughts? What are your suggestions? If we do it this way, what are the implications? If we do it that way, what are the implications? If it's a big enough change, you might look in terms of training. Is this trivial or are there implications? Well, it's going to change the way Mike Smith works. It's going to change the way Jenny works. If it's big enough again, do we need to actually test that idea as to how it will work and just make sure it will work in practice? And then make it happen. But change is normal. That which doesn't change won't survive. So don't avoid it. So in short, have we got a culture of continuous improvement? Is our ambition to become world class? And that's another discussion. We can talk about what world class actually means. It is measurable. Can we become the best we possibly can be? Where it's appropriate, are we lean? Where it's appropriate, are we agile? Where it's appropriate, are we proud competitors? So the next two slides are a couple of just simple expansions on potential design and change bits. Okay, but Mike says, yeah, if helpful, can give all manner of operational help on continuous improvement methods, Six Sigma, Kaizen, Lean, simple approaches to issue analysis, inventory management, and so on. But whether with our help or not, please do it, because the world is a very competitive place and it's becoming smaller. Okay, design phase, just remember, consider how this will change how individuals work. If the change is significant, grasp it. Consider, where appropriate, what soft training might be needed to be done as well as the how-to for each person or group affected. Think how the interactions between departments and stakeholders might change. Work out how to communicate with the relevant people, hence collaborators and gain consensus and buy-in. People fear change, especially if they think they will lose out. So one way or another, act how you would want if acted upon you. Right? So try and avoid roadblocks being put in the way. You know, somebody just putting up the roadblock saying, no, 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 can't be bothered with that. We don't need all that. We don't need to do all that. Just stick that spreadsheet in. That will do nicely. Training and change if needed. Just identify what needs to change and with whom. And then, worst case, start an, inter start an intervention process with workshops involving the affected people or departments. Now, that's usually a case if you're entering brand new markets or if you're doing a merger and acquisition and you're bringing a completely new business into what you do rather than a customer. It's not normally the case when a customer says, you know what, you've done this for two years, we'd like you to do that now. It usually doesn't go that far here, but if you're going into new markets, mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, you could well need to do this sort of thing. Go through a process outlining how things might be after a go live. If you're making that size of change, get buy-in and sign off on the achievable benefits. Yep. Usual thing. 
be proactive, not reactive. <laughs> but whoever's managing the project, you know the answers before asking the questions. Make sure you don't get a surprise. John Harvey Jones, don't know how many of you remember him. He was the CEO of ICI at one time. Uh, he once said, how do you see your people? Do you see them as ne'er-do-wells who are out to get you and need to be told what to do in the finest detail? Those weren't his actual words, but that's what it amounted to. Or, are they potentially your best assets that could fly to the moon and back without a face mask if you train the hell out of them and give them something decent to do? Well, I believe in the second one, not the first one. I think most people go into their work wanting to good, do a good job, wanting to help their company really succeed. All they need is the support to help them be your best asset. So wrapping up, keep evolving. It's normal. Plan for it. Expect it. Don't avoid it. Have active senior management support. This is your edge, so keep it. Because your ERP, as Darren said right at the beginning, is a massive catalyst for operational excellence. It is of itself not the answer. It is merely a support mechanism for your people who are the answer. So this is your edge. Keep it. Make sure it stays relevant. And hopefully that's been useful. That's it. Any questions? Or have you all gone? Hello? Well, thank you very much for the presentation, Mike. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed that, and I'm, I'm sure our audience have uh, appreciated some of the key features of the, uh, the presentation there. Uh, a couple of things that stand out for me um, certainly are uh, the fact that, um, yeah, businesses are uh, are dynamic. They're, they're, they're not monoliths that stand in stone from one, uh, one year to the next or even one day to the next. What happened yesterday isn't necessarily what's going to happen tomorrow. And um, businesses, uh, just like individuals, um, are always looking for continual improvements. And I think uh, those two key takeaways certainly help us to sort of frame how we, we look at moving forwards with the technology that we have to, to hand. Um, I've, um, I've popped a brief uh, prompt out uh, to um, our audience uh, asking if there's uh, any, any further questions and uh, I've had um, uh, some feedback from uh, Simon, uh, okay. basically uh, saying that indeed the completion of an ERP project is not the end of the road but the beginning of a new one. Uh, quite agree with that. And um, also uh, some feedback. Great, uh, great presentation and content as ever, Mike. So I think the audience are very happy with uh, uh, what we've been uh, party to this afternoon. So thank you very much. I'd just like to give... Um, very kind. It's what you try and do something in sort of 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, 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 a, it's a very compressed and powerful sort of 30 minutes, so hopefully uh, there's, uh, there's some very sort of um, strong action points and key messages that our audience can take away there and uh, utilize in their, in their business life. So thank you very much. Um, I've not been given any indications there's any further questions from the floor. Um, one thing um, I did want to mention before, silence is golden indeed, Mike. Um, one thing I did mention um, to yourself earlier, uh, Mike, was the fact that um, we, we looked at obviously the preceding uh, webinars and I know um, we had some technical difficulties with the one that took place at the end of January. Um, so just for the benefit of the audience, yeah. what we'll do is uh, we'll look at revisiting that, uh, that um, webinar again uh, shortly. Um, so please keep um, uh, keep your eyes peeled um, to any um, social media alerts or indeed our, our website uh, www.milnerbrown.com uh, for any announcements about uh, scheduling of that second 
uh, webinar which was uh, focusing on the execution of uh, ERP implementation uh, and we'd be delighted certainly to have uh, Mike revisit that with any uh, any interested parties that wish to attend but uh, just keep um, keep eyes peeled for that one and uh, we, we should be able to announce something shortly. Um, Mike, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to add before we, we finish today? Not of itself. Uh, I, as I said, each of those topics is arguably a big subject in its own right, but the problem is you, you're sort of putting something together in 30, 35 minutes. So I do appreciate it's not totally a, a how-to, but it, if, if I hope it's given people some idea of how they might approach something, um, whether it's a small change, a slightly larger change, or a big change. But what I am saying is, it can be done, and don't be frightened of it. And the biggest thing I would say to you is, please don't slowly go down the slippery slope of ending up with 23 spread spreadsheets, two databases, a couple of notebooks, a whole series of phone calls, and an ERP that you're going, doesn't really work for me anymore. And in terms of the, the depth of experience and knowledge that you have in terms of having to prevent that, uh, Mike, um, just, just for the benefit, of, obviously everybody can see on the screen here, uh, if there are any more in-depth questions or any help or advice that's required, uh, you can contact Mike through uh, gradientconsulting.co.uk uh, and Mike's telephone and uh, email address uh, are actually on the screen as we uh, as we speak now. So I'm, I'm sure, Mike, you'd welcome any, uh, any uh, inquiries and and, uh, further questions off the back of the, the series of yes, seminars and indeed today's. Yes, indeed. Um, I, I, one point I would make is if anybody does have any sort of genuine uh, question regarding how to, um, then please do put it because what you won't get back is a sales pitch. What I'll try and do is just answer your question honestly. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mike. It's been uh, insightful and um, uh, illuminating as ever. I really appreciated your time and input, both for today and also the preceding two uh, webinars. We'll, we'll hope to get you uh, back in uh, back in, uh, in in the seat for a fourth occasion, hopefully over the coming weeks. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for everybody for attending today. And I hope everybody's got uh, got some nuggets of information from uh, a, a very short and sweet half an hour but some very powerful points made there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.